Top 20 Electronics Technician Interview Questions in 2025 An electronics technician plays a vital role in maintaining, troubleshooting, and repairing electronic systems across industries. Interviewers seek candidates who combine theoretical knowledge with practical skills. Whether you're preparing for a job in manufacturing, communications, or field services, this guide will help you approach your interview with confidence. Below are 20 common interview questions designed to evaluate your expertise, problem-solving abilities, and familiarity with industry tools and standards. Each response is concise, informative, and aimed to help you understand not just what to say, but why it matters. Prepare thoroughly and let your knowledge shine during your interview. 1. Can you describe the difference between analog and digital signals? Analog signals are continuous and represent information using variations in voltage, while digital signals use discrete binary values, ones and zeros. In electronics, understanding this distinction is crucial, as analog systems deal with real-world data like sound and temperature, while digital systems handle logic operations and data transmission. Analog circuits tend to be simpler in concept but harder to troubleshoot due to signal variability. Digital systems are more robust to noise and allow for precise control. As a technician, recognizing how and where each type is used helps in designing and repairing equipment efficiently and effectively. 2. What tools and equipment do you commonly use in your work? An electronics technician must be familiar with a range of tools. Commonly used equipment includes multimeters for measuring voltage, current, and resistance, oscilloscopes for signal waveform analysis, and soldering irons for assembling or repairing circuit boards. Function generators, logic analyzers, and power supplies also play essential roles. Proper use of these tools ensures accurate diagnosis and repairs. A strong understanding of test procedures, tool calibration, and safety protocols is crucial. 3. How do you troubleshoot a faulty circuit board? Troubleshooting begins with visual inspection for burnt components or loose connections. Next, I use a multimeter to check voltage levels and continuity across the board. Comparing expected values to measured ones identifies anomalies. If needed, I'll use an oscilloscope for more detailed waveform analysis. Component level testing might follow, checking resistors, capacitors, and semiconductors. I prioritize safety, isolate power if necessary, and work methodically. Experience helps recognize patterns, short circuits, cold solder joints, or damaged ICs. Clear documentation and circuit diagrams assist the process. The goal is always to identify the fault without causing further damage to the board. 4. What are the different types of capacitors and their uses? Capacitors store and release electrical energy and come in various types. Ceramic, electrolytic, tantalum, film, and supercapacitors. Ceramic capacitors are non-polarized and used in high-frequency applications. Electrolytics, polarized and with higher capacitance, are common in power supplies for smoothing voltage. Tantalum capacitors are stable and compact, ideal for dense circuit boards. Film capacitors offer excellent stability and low inductance for audio and RF circuits. Supercapacitors store large energy and are used in backup power systems. Understanding the strengths and limitations of each type is crucial for selecting the right capacitor in different circuits and applications. 5. Can you explain the working principle of a transformer? A transformer operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction. When alternating current flows through the primary winding, it creates a changing magnetic field, which induces a voltage in the secondary winding. The number of windings determines whether the voltage is stepped up or down. Transformers are used to change voltage levels for power distribution or circuit isolation. Core materials and winding techniques affect efficiency. Technicians should understand transformer ratings, polarity, and safety. Troubleshooting involves checking for open windings, shorts, or insulation breakdown. Their ability to safely transfer electrical energy makes them essential in many electronic systems. 6. What is Ohm's law and why is it important? Ohm's law defines the relationship between voltage, V, current, I, and resistance, R V equals IR. It's foundational to all electronics work. Knowing this law allows technicians to calculate unknown values in a circuit, 
like how much current will flow if voltage and resistance are known. It aids in designing circuits, verifying safe operating levels, and diagnosing issues. For instance, if a component is overheating, you can calculate whether the current is too high. It also helps determine power consumption using P equals 6. A solid understanding of Ohm's law ensures reliable, safe, and effective electronic systems. 7. How do you ensure safety while working with electronics? Safety is critical when dealing with electricity. I always de-energize circuits before beginning work, use insulated tools, and wear anti-static wristbands when handling sensitive components. I follow lockout slash tagout procedures where applicable. Proper grounding and fusing protect against short circuits. Awareness of high voltage zones is key. I avoid bypassing safety features and respect all warning labels. Knowing first aid for electric shock and understanding fire hazards adds another layer of preparedness. Clear workspace organization reduces accidents. Regular safety training and PPE compliance ensure long-term safety for me and others around. Safety is never compromised in professional electronics work. 8. What are the common causes of PCB failure? Printed circuit boards, PCBs, can fail due to thermal stress, moisture exposure, manufacturing defects, or component aging. Poor soldering, such as cold joints or bridging, leads to intermittent connections. Electrostatic discharge, ESD, can destroy sensitive ICs. Excessive current may burn traces or damage components. Mechanical stress from improper handling can crack boards or dislodge parts. Contamination, like dust or flux residue, can cause corrosion or conductivity issues. A thorough inspection, often using magnification or thermal imaging, helps detect such failures. Preventing PCB failure starts with good design, careful handling, and regular maintenance procedures. 9. What is the purpose of a diode in a circuit? A diode allows current to flow in one direction while blocking it in the opposite direction. This property makes diodes useful for rectification, converting AC to DC. They also protect circuits by blocking reverse voltage or voltage spikes, common in inductive loads. Zener diodes maintain a constant voltage in regulation circuits. Light-emitting diodes, LEDs, serve as indicators. Schottky and fast recovery diodes offer specific switching advantages. Diodes are fundamental components that must be correctly oriented in a circuit. Technicians use them in power supplies, signal demodulation, and protection systems due to their simplicity and effectiveness. 10. How do you read a circuit diagram? Reading a circuit diagram involves identifying components, their values, and how they're connected. Symbols represent parts like resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors. Lines show connections. Dots indicate junctions. Power sources and grounds are labeled, and signal paths are traced logically. Technicians follow the current path from input to output to understand circuit function. Annotations provide component ratings. Block diagrams help with functional sections. Understanding the schematic aids in troubleshooting, assembly, and upgrades. Familiarity with standard notation and layout styles is essential. It's like reading a map. The better your interpretation, the smoother your work on the actual circuit. 11. What is a microcontroller and where is it used? A microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit that includes a processor, memory, and input-output peripherals. It's essentially a tiny computer designed to perform specific control tasks. Used in everything from appliances to vehicles, microcontrollers automate systems based on programmed logic. As an electronics technician, knowing how to program, test, and interface with microcontrollers is essential. Tasks may include uploading firmware, reading sensor inputs, or controlling actuators. They're low cost, Low power and flexibility make them common in embedded systems. Troubleshooting microcontroller circuits requires understanding both the hardware and the firmware controlling the system. 12. What's the difference between AC and DC current? AC, alternating current, changes direction periodically, while DC, direct current, flows in one constant direction. AC is used in household power because it's easier to transmit over long distances. 
DC powers most electronic devices, such as phones and computers, because of its stable voltage. Understanding both types is essential for circuit design and troubleshooting. AC circuits involve phase, frequency, and impedance concepts, while DC circuits are more straightforward. When converting AC to DC, rectification, components like transformers and diodes are used. Each has specific applications, and technicians must know how to measure and handle both safely. 13. Can you explain how a transistor works? A transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch signals. It has three terminals, emitter, base, and collector. A small current at the base controls a larger current between collector and emitter. Transistors can be bipolar junction, BJT, or field effect, FET. In amplifiers, they boost weak signals. In digital circuits, they form logic gates. Technicians must understand biasing, gain, and switching behavior. Faulty transistors may cause circuit failure, distortion, or loss of function. Testing involves checking junctions using a multimeter. Knowing how transistors work is key for troubleshooting, designing, and repairing electronic systems. 14. What is a relay and how does it function? A relay is an electromechanical switch that uses an electromagnet to open or close contacts. When current flows through the coil, it creates a magnetic field, pulling contacts together or apart. Relays allow low-power circuits to control high-power loads safely. Used in automation, alarms, and control panels, they isolate control and power circuits. Solid-state relays offer faster switching and longer life without moving parts. Technicians check relay function by measuring coil resistance and contact continuity. Understanding coil voltage, contact ratings, and wiring configurations is crucial. Proper relay operation ensures reliability and safety in various applications. 15. How do you handle electrostatic discharge, ESD, sensitive components? Handling ESD sensitive components requires grounding yourself and your tools. I use anti static wrist straps, mats, and ESD safe containers. Workspaces are kept clean and free of insulating materials. Components are stored in anti static bags. Before touching devices, I discharge static by touching grounded surfaces. Labels indicate ESD sensitivity. Damage from ESD might not be visible but can degrade performance over time. Awareness of humidity, footwear, and movement also helps control static buildup. Following ESD procedures protects delicate semiconductors and ensures product reliability. It's a fundamental aspect of professional electronics handling and maintenance. 16. What is the function of a resistor in a circuit? Resistors limit current flow and divide voltage in electronic circuits. They prevent component damage by controlling the amount of current that can pass. Resistors can also adjust signal levels, bias active elements, and terminate transmission lines. Values are chosen using Ohm's law. Fixed, variable, potentiometers, and surface mount resistors offer versatility. Technicians read resistor values using color codes or labels. Faulty resistors may open or drift in value, causing circuit malfunction. Measuring resistance and checking power rating are essential in replacement. Their simplicity and utility make resistors one of the most common and vital components in any circuit. 17. How do you test an electronic component? Testing components involves isolating them from the circuit when necessary and using tools like a multimeter or LCR meter. For resistors, I measure resistance and compare with labeled values. Capacitors are tested for capacitance, leakage, and ESR. Diodes and transistors are checked for forward and reverse bias behavior. Continuity and voltage drop tests help determine condition. Visual inspection can catch cracks or burns. Some parts, like ICs, may require test sockets or datasheet-guided functional testing. Accurate testing prevents replacing good components unnecessarily and helps pinpoint actual faults quickly, improving repair efficiency and circuit reliability. 18. What is an oscilloscope used for? An oscilloscope displays voltage over time, showing signal waveforms. It's essential for analyzing signal behavior in analog and digital circuits. I use it to observe frequency, amplitude, distortion, 
noise, and transient events. It helps verify timing, test clock signals, and debug glitches. Probes and grounding techniques affect accuracy, so proper setup is crucial. Triggering allows capturing specific events. Advanced scopes offer math functions, FFT analysis, and protocol decoding. Understanding time slash DIV and volt slash DIV settings is fundamental. Oscilloscopes provide real time visibility into circuit operation, making them indispensable for diagnosis and development. 19. What is the importance of preventive maintenance in electronics? Preventive maintenance reduces downtime, extends equipment life, and ensures consistent performance. It includes regular inspections, cleaning, testing, and calibration of components. I check for overheating, loose connections, corrosion, or physical damage. Timely capacitor replacement, fan cleaning, and firmware updates are examples. Proper logs track history and predict failures. Preventive efforts cost less than emergency repairs and improve workplace safety. In critical systems, Scheduled maintenance avoids operational disruptions. Technicians must balance frequency with operational needs. This proactive approach reflects professionalism and significantly contributes to reliability and customer satisfaction. 20. How do you stay updated with the latest electronics technology? I stay current by reading industry journals, attending webinars, and subscribing to electronics forums. I follow manufacturers' updates and study new data sheets or application notes. Certifications and courses enhance my skills. I participate in community projects, which expose me to emerging technologies. Platforms like IEEE, EDN, and YouTube channels offer tutorials and reviews. Networking with peers and joining professional groups also helps. Staying updated is essential because technology evolves rapidly, with new tools, microcontrollers, and components constantly emerging. Being proactive ensures I remain effective and adaptable as an electronics technician. Conclusion. Mastering both theoretical concepts and hands-on skills is essential for a successful career as an electronics technician. These 20 questions represent common topics that assess your practical experience, safety awareness, and understanding of key electronic principles. During an interview, clarity, Confidence and professionalism are just as important as technical accuracy. Keep your answers structured, concise, and based on real-world knowledge. Continued learning, attention to detail, and a proactive mindset will not only help you land the job but also excel in it. By preparing thoroughly, you position yourself as a capable and reliable technician in a competitive field.